Well, hello there, everybody. God bless you, and welcome to our show, The Breaker 2.0, where we are believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. This is your host, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, and we're believing in the beginning of this year that uh, God's going to move like never before. Today, we're going to talk about breakthrough in faith, such a huge and hot, important topic. Get excited to receive from what the woman of God is about to say. Dr. Jolin, God bless you, and welcome to the show, The Breaker 2.0. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for having me. It is always such an honor, such an exciting time, an amazing time in the Lord when we get to share Jesus and talk about the Lord and flow in the prophetic, flow in the apostolic together. So I am greatly looking forward to today, especially with this hot topic. Well, you know, you definitely embody uh, this realm, this gift, the spirit of faith, you embody that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems that, of course, you've been working on a big project all year. And it's been quite a faith journey, hasn't it been? Yeah. So I think you're talking about our new church That's in St. Right. Petersburg, yes. Florida. Amen. And it has been a faith journey from the time that I first looked at the property. It was very obvious that it was going to need a lot of work. And I don't mean like remodeling this. This thing needed to be resurrected. <laughs> you know, it literally needed to be brought back to life. Um, the building was uh, practically in ruins, but the Lord gave me the confirmation and even other members on my team that that was the one that is the one and so we went forward and yes there was opposition because anytime you are doing anything the lord has called you to do let, let me just go ahead and say it like this when you have the attention of the lord it's inevitable that you're going to get the attention of the enemy. And there's no way that the, the devil's going to roll out the red carpet and welcome you and just put the coffee on and say, well, you're here. You know, we may as well try to get along now. So there was opposition, but I saw the opportunity in that to cultivate faith and to stir up my faith and to contend, come on and to stand. Amen. And, you know, we're not going to back off and we're not going away, but you are going to back off and you are going to go away. And so really any time I've just found this in my, in my time with over the years with the Lord, I found that any time you are going for any promise of God, including an assignment, including something God is calling you to do, be, or have, there's going to be opposition because you're going to be attaining something the devil doesn't want you to have. But the Lord will always say to you, if you will take my hand and work the word and don't back off and having done all, you're going to stand in the name of Jesus. You will see the devil retreat and leave just like he did when he tried to interfere with Jesus himself, right? In Luke chapter four, but the devil will quit if you don't quit and we weren't going to quit. And so here we are. Close to the launch, amen, mm. but it did take faith. It took a lot of faith and pursuit. It took faith and a lot of pursuit. Well, let me ask you, do you feel like planning to open the church, acquire this building, et cetera, et cetera, do you feel like it took more faith or it took a different amount of faith, different type of faith? Does that make sense, Dr. Joe? Absolutely. And, but I, let me just say this, there really was no plan. <laughs> you know, it was just something the Lord called us to, uh, woke me up in the middle of the night and, um, and I felt like a heaviness in me. And I said, I'm just a very naturally bubbly, optimistic individual. I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, it's hope deferred. You know, it's your new season and it's time for you to be in a building where the people can come and have a relationship with me and begin to encounter me and where I can inhabit the tabernacle and just bring the signs, wonders, and miracles that I'm famous for. And he said, you know that. You've been praying in the spirit, amen. And that's what you've actually been praying for. And that was a shock to me as I have, amen, I have. But the Lord said, yes, because it is the next step for you. And so the heaviness that you feel is because it is time for it to come forth. So that's the only reason that I began to even look at real estate. It wasn't on my radar. Um, but it took, uh, it took tenacity in my faith. I knew what God had said. And, you know, there's a lot of things I do not do very well. But one thing I do well is I hear God. And I knew that I knew, you know, the Lord is not a God of confusion. First Corinthians 14, 33. He is a God of clarity. He is a God of peace. 
And I knew what I heard the Lord say. So it took tenacity because do you not know, as soon as we put in our offer, here come two other churches trying to put in their offer. And then here come the, uh, the inspection reports. Oh, well, there's this problem. It's going to take this to, you know, get this thing on its legs again. And then as we begin to go forth, and of course we did purchase the building and we had to be aggressive about that. And I feel in my spirit to just get it out there for somebody that when you know that the Lord has said that something belongs to you, even if it comes down to a promise in the word of God, your healing, uh, uh, restoration of your family, come on, restoration of your mind, restoration of your life, right? You've been through enough and now it's time to rebuild your life. Attaining the blessing of God, living in the promises of God, you can't back off. You've got to be tenacious in your faith. If God said it, that settles it. The word of God cannot and will not return void. But it is up to us to stand because the devil is counting on making you quit. He's counting on turning up the heat, right? And just bringing the attacks uh, that will ultimately make a lot of people quit. But that's why Galatians chapter six, verse nine says that, uh, you know, you've got to press in, amen, and just believe that if you don't quit, if you don't back off, if you don't give up, you will reap if you don't faint. And that was definitely our position. Wow, powerful. Well, I love that. There's a number of incredible things you just said, Dr. Jolin, but you said you were aggressive. And, you know, the Bible says that those uh, who advance in the kingdom, they take it by force. There is That's an aggression. Right. There is a power of force. And especially with the things of God, we need to be even more aggressive in a sense, in love, absolutely, but in boldness, because the Bible says oh, yes. uh, a child of God, son, daughter of God comes before the throne of grace and boldness in your kingdom authority. But I, I think it's That's fascinating, right. Dr. Jolin, because you said that you had no plan to do this, but you discerned the voice of the Lord. You felt a shift. You felt a transition. And honestly, in a time right now where many churches are closing down, uh, you are opening up a church and there's an opportunity here, praise God. And you see the opportunity. How important do you think it is to understand an assignment from God? Because obviously you are approaching this as an assignment from the Lord, not as an accident, but as an assignment. Absolutely. Well, you know, Dr. Ben, I, I've studied this actually a lot and I've taught on it. I've written a book about it. Everybody has an assignment from the Lord. Everybody has actually more than one assignment from the Lord. It changes as you go forth and, you know, as you mature in your faith, there will be additional things and possibly even brand new things that will be revealed to you. But every single person, everybody listening to us now, you, your followers and your audience and your, your partners, each and every individual has a very specific purpose for their life and things that God has planned for their life, even if they feel like they are in a struggle right now, even if they feel like they have not reached their fullest potential right now. Let me tell you something. God has still got a plan for their life. He has not changed his mind about them. Amen. And the more an individual seeks the Lord and the more they pursue their relationship with Jesus and just cultivate that relationship with Jesus Christ, what's going to happen is they're going to grow in wisdom and in stature. And that's what the Bible says in Luke 2, 52. They're going to grow in wisdom and in stature. And then the Lord will begin to open up his favor to them. Praise the Lord. And even that same principle is echoed in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, where in response to your, uh, to the individual's growth and uh, spiritual growth and transformation, that's when the Lord will begin to talk to you about your destiny. And your destiny includes assignments, opportunities relationships, connections, but also blessings too. Amen. So I definitely believe that each and every person still has something that the Lord has for their life. And I'd like to say it like this, and I have often, if you were done, if you had already done or received all that God has for you, you wouldn't be here. Mm. You would be in heaven with the angels. But the reality is God is not finished with your life. So I really pray that encourages somebody right now. You know, um, the Bible says that God will cause people to be mounted up with wings as eagles. So even if you feel like, you know, oh, no, the best years of my life are gone. No, the devil is a liar. 
The best years of your life are ahead of you. Come on, somebody, because even Caleb was in his 80s. And he said, give me that mountain. That's my property. That's my destiny. Amen. And he said, look at me. I am just as strong and able-bodied as I was when I was in my 40s. God will quicken you. He will strengthen you, add more years to your life, and then launch you into what he has for you. So I really... I'm really feeling that strong in my spirit. I hope that encourages somebody because there are still opportunities, assignments, destiny, blessings, all manner of good things. God withholds no good thing from those who walk uprightly. And those promises of God are for each person listening right now. I feel to say in the name of Jesus and put like a little note of finality on that. Amen. Well, absolutely. Uh, When you're in your assignment, the anointing's there. You thrive. Yes. Of course, there's some opposition and warfare, but there is an alignment, a direct divine kairos with heaven. And ultimately, we want to be in the will of God. Dr. Jolin, I believe right now, many people watching, they're feeling an assignment shift. They're feeling a change or a transition. Uh, things are shifting in their assignment. Uh, real quickly, for the next one minute, what is your thought or your encouragement for those that are in an assignment shift right now? You know, 2024 is a very strategic year in the kingdom of God. There are so many people who are saying, well, this has been the church's problem. And if the church would do this or that, no, no, no. We are in an Isaiah chapter two, verse two season. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is stronger than ever. It's getting stronger by the day. We are taking territory. God is opening doors that no man can shut. And that is inevitable. I feel to say mantles are falling. Assignments are being given in the name of Jesus. And I do believe that 2024 will be a year of great transition for many people where you will go from the old thing into the new thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. For such a time as this. And I feel in my spirit that even a lot of people listening right now, this is so prophetic, but even a lot of people listening right now, when you move further into 2024 and we are at the top of the year, but when you do, you will see with such clarity that everything you went through specifically in 22 and 23 were the preparation and just the, the tilling of the soil, the plowing of the soil that was required for where the Lord is going to open you. What, what God, that's the better way. Uh, what God is going to open to you in 2024. But, you know, before the broadcast began, we were talking, Dr. Ben, and I told you, I'm just fascinated to watch how the Lord is putting people where they need to be like a chessboard. And that is, the more I think about it, that is so incredibly accurate because that is what the Lord will do. He said, no, no, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. He said, I'm going to bless my people and I will be an enemy to those who who say they're going to be an enemy to you. The Lord is saying, touch not my people. Do not at your own peril, do not attempt to interfere with my kingdom plan. Amen. In 2024, 2025 and beyond in the name of Jesus. But here's what that's going to mean for a lot of people. Exactly what you just said, precisely, very prophetic insight you received. People are going to be transitioning from where they were, what they were, how they were serving and how they were living too. Amen. How they were living as well uh, to, to the next level, to the next dimension of what the Lord has for them. Mantles are falling. The oil is being poured out and God is strategically moving people like a chessboard. Amen. But it's also a time, I, um, if I can just finish by saying this, it is also going to be a year When the people of God are going to encounter the blessing of God like never before. Amen. Just as their most clear confirmation and understanding they've ever had that he is a good father, that he is with them, and that the Lord can easily override anything that's going on in the world. Because we may be in the world, but we are not of that world. Amen. So the Lord is going to be showing up for people very prolifically and very prominently to send the clear confirmation to them. I told you, you're in the world, but you're not of that world. Amen. So that that's what I see for 2024. Wow. Amen and amen. Well, truly God is moving the worldwide stage, the church stage. He is shifting things on the board. And are you ready to change your position? 
Friends, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, myself and Dr. Jolyn Whitaker, we're going to talk about the faith that repositions you for the next level. We'll see you soon right after this break. Hey there, friends. It's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, and I want to invite you to prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner with me and Ben Lim Ministries. You see, we are committed to seeing the Great Commission fulfilled in our time through our online social media events and as well through our revivals and our missional efforts through our crusades. You see, we can reach the world with your help. Consider becoming a partner with me and Bella Ministries. Thank you and God bless. Well, hello there, friends. Welcome back to the show, The Breaker 2.0, where we're believing for a breakthrough in every area of your life. And my guest today, the one and only incredible Dr. Jolyn Whitaker. Now, Dr. Jolyn, before the break, we were talking about God repositioning people in the chessboard. The proud is being humbled. The humble is being lifted up. Can you talk about how faith will position and reposition us in these end times? Because the days are getting darker, but truly it's also getting brighter. Um, I've said this before that 2024 is going to be a very bad year for the devil and a phenomenal year for the church. And that is just the way it's going to be in the name of Jesus Christ. And we go back to Genesis chapter 12, you know, verses one and two, where the Lord told Abraham, get up, leave your father's house and go to the place I'm going to show you. And that took incredible faith. But look at what the man of God walked in too. And by the way, he was 75 years old at the time. That's crazy. A lot of people don't mention that, but I find that just fascinating. Amen. So it is never too late for the Lord to open a new door for you and just do a new thing in your life. But in the case of Abraham, it wasn't just a new door or a new thing in his life. It was accessing and going into his purpose, his destiny. So I feel to prophesy to many of your viewers that 2024 will be a year that some of them need to be ready to move geographically. Some of them need to be ready for a new door to be open to them. And there are times that you got to get up and go to where the Lord is leading you. Amen. But when it is the Lord's plan for your life, there is nothing you walk away from that will not immediately be overshadowed and you will be overwhelmed in a good way by what the Lord has for you. And I do see geographical moves and I do see new doors of opportunity. Again, like a chessboard, God is going to be putting and positioning and really the word I'm hearing in my spirit is inserting his people uh, in spheres of influence. Amen. So there's going to be some promotion for many of God's people coming very rapidly this year. I love how you said that the, the proud are being humbled. Amen. But God's people are going to be put in some of those positions that the proud are being taken out of. So their demotion will mean our promotion for many people. Amen. But spheres of influence, you know, in the entertainment industry, in business, in finance, in education, uh, even in politics. And I know that's a hot topic, but that's what the Lord said. Even in the political realm, any realm where there is a sphere that, that has great impact and influence, best believe God is going to be putting people there in 2024, as well as regions, regions and territories. Amen. Well, it's definitely a time of expansion, kingdom expansion. Mm. And, uh, you know, God is opening up these doors for opportunity and uh, we must have faith. Now, I know, you know, people can look at you, Dr. Jolin, and say, wow, you're opening up a new church. Praise God. Congratulations. You have this worldwide ministry, best-selling books. You're a best-selling author uh, and the accolades go on and on. However, it didn't happen overnight. You obviously had mm -hmm. to work your faith. You as a woman, as a woman of God, had to work your faith. Can you share a little bit with our viewers? Maybe there's a single mother watching at home. Maybe there's a young lady, a young teenage girl, or or somebody going through brokenness. You know, uh, I'm sure your story will encourage them and also stir up their faith. Amen. It has been a faith journey, you know, and I would say the most important thing is to believe what God says about you, to have faith in what the Lord says about you, that you are beloved, that you are his workmanship, that he does have good plans for you. He knows the plans he has for your life, that he is well able to restore you, that he is well able to heal you. Amen. Mind, body, and spirit. 
So I found Dr. Ben in, in my journey, not just in the pursuit of opening the church, but my whole life, that you know your history does not disqualify you for what the Lord has for you. A moment ago, I talked about how you know Abraham had to get up and go from his father's house at age 75 and go into a brand new territory. But hardly anybody talks about the fact that Abraham or Abram at the time had been raised by a father who was not just an idol worshiper, but he was an idol maker. They had a thriving business. So this man had, you know, a, a, a pagan background, but the Lord brought Abram at that time to himself, changed his whole life, changed his uh, identity, changed his name, and then said, now I can talk to you about who you really are and the plans I have for your life. And so I want to encourage somebody to have faith that God loves you and that God has good plans for your life. And what you have done does not disqualify you from what the Lord has for you, but you got to repent, obviously, and be ready to tra be transformed by the renewing of your mind, but have faith that the Lord's plans for you are good. And you know, like Dr. Ben mentioned, if you don't see something happening overnight or as rapidly as you hoped it would, don't give up. My Lord, if I gave up every time there was opposition, if I gave up when somebody told me no, if I gave up when somebody attacked me, my Lord, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So you've got to stand in faith, amen, that the devil is a liar, but your God is a good God and he will do everything he promised to do for your life. But I just speak faith over you and I just pray that you are hearing, you're picking up what Jesus is putting down. Amen. Because I really feel like this is a, even a prophetic activation of your faith. Amen. Absolutely. Well, you are a woman of faith. I'm a man of faith. Um, obviously, uh, faith is all I have. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, although I may be, uh, you know, charming and, and humorous, right? But uh, faith is definitely a greater virtue than all of those things. And uh, I love what you said. God changed the name of Abram. He changed his life, his whole identity. Friends, when you have faith, everything about you begins to change. And that's what we are believing this broadcast is going to do for you. Breakthrough in your faith. Um, of course, the shield of faith, Dr. Joe, is one of the uh, uh, weapons of our warfare, right? The shield of faith. But the shield in the Roman times, isn't just defensive. It's also offensive. So it's not just to protect, but it is to project. It's to move forward. And I believe God's about to increase That's good. all of our shield of faith today because we are on the offense, my friends. Dr. Jolin, let me ask you real quick. Uh, what are certain things that you do to build your faith or to stay in faith? Obviously, the enemy tries to attack, uh, you know, the, the, the world, uh, you know, is dark. There's a lot of things going on. But what are certain things that you do practically to stay encouraged in your faith uh, that will help our viewers today? Praise the Lord. Great question. Phenomenal. Number one, you've got to stay in the word. You know, the word of God will tell you the truth. When you have the shield of faith protecting you, do you know that the atmosphere has to respond to you? Come on. Amen. So it's not that the world is going to affect you, but you've got something on you. You have a level of protection that has to be respected. Devil might not want to, but that's irrelevant. So your shield of faith is not only going to project you, but I, or protect you, but I love what Dr. Ben said. It's going to project as well your faith. No, I don't receive that. It's not going to be my story. Amen. Because I know what the Lord said about me. I know what the Lord said I can have. Praise the Lord. But back to some practical, um, practical uh, actions, actionable items. Amen. Stay in the word. Read your word every single day. You've got to just consume the word of God like it is the most healthy food because really it is. It is living, it is active, it is a miracle producing book that literally produces miracles in the life of the person who reads it. The Bible says the, the word is living and active, amen. So read some Bible every single day. I don't care if you gotta listen to it on your phone, however you wanna do it, read it on your phone, but read the word of God, take it like your vitamins every single day. The second thing is make sure you pray. 
Make sure you pray. Praise the Lord. I'm reminded of the three wins that Jesus talked about when you fast, when you pray, when you give. So stay in the word of God. Amen. Stay in prayer. Praise the Lord. Take all of your concerns to the Lord because he cares for you. Amen. And believe that God will do what he said in Psalm 138, that he'll perfect all that concerns you. Praise the Lord. Uh, when you fa fast, make fasting a part of your life as well, but you got to do it the right way. A scriptural fast will produce a scriptural result. And so fasting literally means to abstain from food, to cover the mouth, to push away the plate. And when you do so, you will be growing in spiritual authority. Amen. Now brace yourself for what growth in your spiritual authority is going to do, because now you can receive higher from the Lord. You can receive a greater measure from the Lord because you have the spiritual uh, a fortitude. Amen. To handle it. Praise the Lord. And then of course, you know, giving. When you, when you fast, when you pray, when you give, praise the Lord. So just staying in that, working the word, uh, staying in the word, understanding that the word of God is the truth and it, it is the highest authority on the planet, amen. Speaking the word, letting your confession, amen. According to uh, Proverbs 18, 21, letting your confession command the world around you. I like to say, speak your world, amen. But you gotta speak the word of God. That's what's going to shape your world around you. Praise the Lord. And when you do all these things in faith, I believe it's going to blow your mind at how rapidly the Lord blesses you, shifts you and increases you in this season and the season to come. Amen. Wow. Powerful, Dr. Jolin. I love these practical, they're biblical keys. And when we utilize them, then truly we'll become stronger and stronger. And I love what you said. Faith is an atmosphere. You carry that atmosphere wherever you go, and uh, it's going to release blessings in this planet. Uh, Dr. Jolin, it's been such a rich, rich broadcast. Truly, I feel encouraged. Uh, before we close, how can people find you, follow you? Praise the Lord. Thank you for asking. So my website is jolynwhitaker.org. We are active on, I think, every social media platform. <laughs> we're, we're easy to find. Amen. Even if you just, you know, go to my website, all the links are right there. All the, all the usual suspects for social media, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, I know it's X now, but I still say Twitter, uh, Instagram. Amen. And as the spirit gives me utterance, we're pretty active uh, online. We're very, we're called to be very engaging, praise the Lord, with the people of God. So in that capacity, yeah. Amen and amen. Dr. Jolin, God bless you. Thank you so much for being who you are in the kingdom and uh, being a woman of faith. People of God, that was Dr. Jolin Whitaker. No introduction, conclusion needed. Uh, she is an incredible woman of God. I hope you enjoyed today's show on the Breaker 2.0 as we discuss breakthrough in faith. Get ready to go to a whole new level and dimension in your walk with Jesus. My special guest today was Dr. Jolyn Whitaker. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with the Breaker 2.0, where we're believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. We will see you very soon. God bless.